of Human Bondage, a 1934 film, delves into the complexities of human relationships and the struggles of its protagonist. Despite its age, this movie packs in numerous moments that are funny, shocking, and deeply sad. So, if you're curious about some surprising facts, stick around. This movie raises questions about love, obsession, and the pursuit of happiness. Can you recall a time when a story like this resonated with you personally? Have you ever been inspired or impacted by the themes explored in of human bondage? What makes this film endure as a timeless symbol of the industry? Is it the raw emotion portrayed by the actors, the universal themes it tackles, or something else entirely? We're eager to hear your most cherished memories or personal experiences related to this film. Share your stories and reflections in the comments below. Your input adds depth to our discussion. So let's uncover the layers of, of human bondage together. And don't forget to share your thoughts. There's much more to explore beneath the surface. During its era, a certain film left a lasting impression on audiences despite initial mixed reviews. It told a story of obsession, desire, and redemption that captivated viewers and inspired various adaptations across different forms of media. The journey of its protagonist through love, loss, and self-discovery struck a chord with many, ensuring its place in the annals of popular culture. This movie's exploration of universal themes and memorable characters continues to influence contemporary media, demonstrating its timeless appeal. Amid the buzz of anticipation, a significant event unfolded at a famous venue in the heart of New York City. The premiere night held at Radio City Music Hall showcased a remarkable production, drawing the attention of many. However, an unexpected absence added an element of mystery to the evening. As the curtains rose, those present witnessed a compelling story unfold on the screen, leaving a lasting impression on the audience. Despite initial worries, the main actor later revealed surprising insights about the chemistry between the cast members, shedding light on the collaborative nature of filmmaking. The movie's impact reverberated long after the lights came back on, underscoring the power of storytelling and human connection in the world of cinema. This glimpse behind the scenes offers a fascinating perspective on the collaborative efforts that contributed to the success of the production, highlighting the enduring influence of the film. Betty Davis, in preparation for her role, hired a Cockney English housekeeper. The film debuted on June 28, 1934, just three days before the strict enforcement of the Motion Picture Production Code. Notably, the paintings of nude women cherished by Philip Carey were among the last such images seen in an American film for many years. John Cromwell, considering an adaptation of W. Somerset Maugham's novel, had Richard Barthelmess in mind for the male lead. After viewing a film featuring Barthelmess, Cromwell was struck by a young actress and a small part Betty Davis. Cromwell championed her for the role of Mildred. Among the 400 movies nominated for America's Greatest Love Stories by the American Film Institute in 2002, of human bondage gained recognition. It secured an Italian censorship visa on July 25, 1939, under the number 30683. The lead actor, Leslie Howard, originally Leslie Howard Steiner, officially changed his name by deed poll on February 24, 1920, and the change was enrolled in the central office of the Supreme Court of Judicature on March 3, 1920. As a result, his performance in the film received widespread acclaim, solidifying his place in cinematic history. The character he portrayed captured the hearts of audiences worldwide, resonating deeply with the themes of love, longing, and self-discovery depicted in the movie. Of Human Bondage continues to be celebrated as a timeless masterpiece, cherished by generations of film enthusiasts for its compelling narrative and unforgettable performances. In the film, Leslie Howard found himself aboard an ill-fated plane with a diverse group of individuals, including a British Secret Service agent, a mining engineer, and a Washington correspondent. Among them was Betty Davis, whose determination to play the role of Mildred, despite Howard's initial reservations, eventually won him over. In a previous production, Fashions of 1934, Davis had reluctantly donned a blonde wig and fashionable attire to impress studio executives, hoping to secure the opportunity to portray Mildred. Although initially skeptical of an American taking on the role, Howard was ultimately impressed by Davis' dedication and talent. Clubfoot, a condition depicted in both Leslie Howard's character and his patient, often resulted in a visible deformity and pronounced limp during the period portrayed in the film. Today, surgical procedures readily correct such defects, much like those for a cleft palate. W. Somerset Mimes' original novel spans 600 pages, while the film adaptation is a concise 82 minutes. At the preview, RKO executives were surprised to hear laughter, an unexpected reaction. 
After multiple viewings, they attributed it to the Max Steiner score. Consequently, the composer crafted a new score, incorporating motifs for each principal character. Betty Davis pursued the role of Mildred Rogers as her chance to break through in the film industry after years of struggling. She pleaded with Warner Brothers studio chief Jack L. Warner to release her from her contract to take on the part. Initially skeptical of her potential success, Warner eventually relented. However, when Davis's performance gained acclaim and talk of an Oscar nomination emerged, Warner launched a campaign against her, discouraging Academy members from voting for her. Despite being initially excluded from the Best Actress category, Davis's supporters rallied, petitioning the Academy with write-in votes. Consequently, she was added as a nominee, but ultimately lost to Claudette Colbert. This incident led to a change in the Academy's voting practices, with the introduction of independent vote counting by Price, Waterhouse & Co. Catherine Hepburn and Sheridan and Irene Dunn all declined the role of Mildred before it propelled Davis to stardom. In a striking opening scene, the Eiffel Tower stands brightly lit against the evening sky, with its lights spelling out Citroën in big letters. This ad was put up by a French car company from 1925 to 1934. Sadly, they had to take it down in 1934 because of money problems. People today might be surprised to learn that the famous tower was once used as a giant billboard. Betty Davis gave an amazing performance in a movie that Life magazine said might be the best ever by an American actress. Her acting really brought the story to life and left a strong impression on viewers. Even though the movie came out after the code was enforced, it's still considered a pre-code movie because it talks about things that were considered off-limits under the code's rules. In a fascinating twist, three main actors in a certain movie share the same name Reginald. This adds an interesting layer of coincidence to the story, sparking curiosity among viewers. The movie is the first of three adaptations based on W. Somerset Maugham's classic novel. Its timeless themes and strong characters have made it a favorite for filmmakers to bring to life on screen. The journey of this film hasn't been easy. When its copyright expired, low-quality copies flooded the market, disappointing many viewers. Finding a good version became a challenge, with lots of bad ones to sift through. Despite these hurdles, various versions of the movie try to capture Mom's brilliance. Despite the availability of bad copies, people are still drawn to this classic story. Whether you're a movie buff or just watching for fun, finding a good copy of this film adds excitement to the experience. The search itself shows how this movie's impact lasts over time. It's not just a movie, it's a look into human emotions and how mom's storytelling shines on screen. This journey, despite its challenges, shows how this story stands the test of time. Isn't it fascinating how some movies that initially didn't do so well end up becoming classics? Take, for instance, a film from 1934 that wasn't a hit when it first came out. Despite having great acting and an interesting story, it didn't impress critics much. But as time passed, people started to really like it, even considering it a must-watch. In this movie, there's this character played by Betty Davis who really stands out. She portrays someone who's manipulative and causes a lot of trouble. People were really drawn to her character's sad story, and it stuck with them. What's interesting is that the author of the book the movie is based on wasn't too happy with how it turned out. He thought the main actor didn't have enough charm to play the lead role, despite its rocky start. This movie has become super famous in the history of films. It's all about how people relate to each other and chase after their desires, and that's something that still connects with audiences today.